Boom, boom. It's mind pump time. All right, would you like to win a free shredded summer bundle, which includes MAPS Aesthetic, MAPS Prime, MAPS Hit, um, the Intuitive Nutrition Guide, all those programs for free, here's what you got to do. All you got to do is leave a comment in the first 24 hours, and if we pick your comment as the best comment, it's got to be the best one, it's got to be number one, then you get to win the Shredded Summer Bundle. Also, subscribe to the channel, turn on your notifications so that you know when we post these episodes because we give away stuff all of the time. Also, one more thing, 72 hours left. That's it. There's three days left for one of the biggest promotions we've done all year long. So MAPS Anabolic is 50% off, and the Shredded Summer Bundle is 50% off, and this promotion is gone in 72 hours. Go check it out. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com. Use the code APRILSPECIAL with no space for that discount. By the way, I feel like somebody comes in and messes with the cameras. <laughs> you say that every time. I don't understand it. Just, it. like... Hey, put a I hidden camera in here, Doug. I haven't figured out. Who's this the chair, bandit? This chair never moves. That camera never moves. But yet you have to come in here. And we lock the doors. Time. I do. I, and I know you. You blame. You blame I think, me. I think I there's somebody coming in. Where it's like. I think oh, two things, Doug. What? <laughs> Either you have a split personality. <laughs> maybe uh, I do. Or maybe I don't. <laughs> or there's a ghost. I've been saying this forever. Yeah, there's a ghost here. There's a yeah. we have a tech we have ghost. Normal yeah. activity in here. We Dude, have tech ghosts in here. I feel that. I'm very mm. sensitive. Somebody yeah. died here a long time ago. Adam. Who, yo, Adam. Who knows? <laughs> they don't even know. They don't. They don't even know, bro. Nobody knows. They don't even know. I'm telling you guys. <laughs> <laughs> they don't. Dude, shirts, shirts are flying right I now. Ate, I ate at. Uh, oh, they are. Huh? Yeah, yeah. They're crushing right now. Of course, of it's course. It's a great quote. No, it was good. That was good. And you know what? Yeah, you got me. The yeah. reason why it's good is because it's true. Yeah. To be honest with you, Adam and I had no idea. Ah, well, ah. I wore my Viore gear today, bro. You, uh, hey, you're Viore out too. Look yeah, you like this. Your 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 Viore. Let me give you a your Viore head to toe. Look at this. Know, right. Stand up for a second. I mean, you're ready to Don't run. Stand too. up for a second. Almost. Now hold on a second. Here's the problem. Sometimes sweats the butt doesn't look good. Let's see the butt. Turn around, uh, lift the shirt a little bit. Where's the donk? That's a that's not bad. Okay, Justin. <laughs> like, he's got <laughs> a little bit. Of I noticed how you pushed it he's out. Got, <laughs> I, I, I guess the Instagram chick model. Yeah, he's move. got cupcakes. I'm on. I, I'm on to it. I uh, he doesn't have full cakes. <laughs> he doesn't have the full. Not yet. Yo, bro, I passed the barbell test. That's no, the no, test. No. I know, dude. That's true. But we we all did. Listen, yeah. there's there's cake. Yeah. And there's cupcakes. Yeah. Like cupcakes. You got cupcakes. Duck, oh, and Doug twerked on it. Then there's pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. Doug was sort of banging the grass. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, what are you doing? Did you know? Did you know? There's a tribe. Where is this tribe? Ah, oh, I want to say. In, I think uh, it's Turkestan. In, no, <laughs> Turkestan. Shut up. What? <laughs> Doug, <laughs> Doug nice. hits it. Sometimes he hits it good. <clears throat> mm. There was this tribe. I don't know where they're at, but they're like uh, kind of modern hunter gatherers. And part of their ritual to improve the 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 fertility of the earth, right? So they want the earth to produce like bounty for them. Mm. Once a year, the men go out, I swear to God, they dig holes and they fuck the earth and then they fertilize <laughs> God. What? Yes, Doug, look this up, please. No, they don't. Yes, they do. Like they dig holes. They dig holes. And they make love the, to Mother Earth. All the gold guys go out. Well, They dig holes, and then they bang the earth. So there's, they literally are planting and they seed. And they seed it. They seed. And I think you posted it. about this like a year or two ago. Of like people, I know I didn't post that. That is the ultimate no. hippie thing to do. What, what, there is like a there's like a term for these people that. that go around and like hump trees and stuff, right? Oh yeah, no these are these are this is a tribe. This is part of their that's what they do. Oh, this is different. No, this is not like a weirdo like oh I like the, oh, my car right because isn't there uh like uh yes uh, what's it called what what do you call that like a dis, not a disorder like a disorder like a sexual well, disorder? Well, they're just they're just weird oh, yeah. fetishes. Right? Yeah, there you go, fetish. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. I was missing that's the word. <laughs> I was fetishes looking. aren't disorders. You gotta be politically <laughs> it's correct. Kink. Yeah, it's like a, but there are people that will be yeah, sexually attracted. I have sex with dirt to objects, right? No, no, no. This tribe literally goes and does this to make the earth produce more bounty for them. Mm. So they go bang it. What does your shirt they say? Get, oh, you don't like this? Pluto, the center, forget. What does that say? Yeah. Never, Never forget, bro. 1930. Never forget. Okay, Never gonna, forget. School yeah, me. 1930, 206. I don't get Come it. Come on, bro. When you were in school, what was Pluto? Remember? No, explain to me. What, what happened in 2006? No, no, no. 
Pluto was a planet, right? Yeah. It's the ninth planet. Right? Yeah. Okay. And then in 2006, NASA came out and said, no, oh, no not, it's not a planet. That it's was not, in 2006. And that broke my heart. Yep. Wow, that wasn't yeah. 06, huh? Lies. It's conspiracy. It lies. It's a conspiracy. Yeah. I'm with you on this. Yeah. It's a planet. I, the, the thing is, though, I was done with school Bring when, it I, back. When, they, when they announced that. Right? Huh? We were done with school when they announced that. Yeah, I didn't learn in school in 2006. Yeah, 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 I learned right. on Facebook. Mm. <laughs> you that, up, <laughs> that should be a t-shirt yeah. i learned on facebook so, yeah. this is like an ode to our generation it's you know a, yeah. we were taught uh, the next one i'm gonna get is gonna be like sal's you know, famous yeah, what do they consider it now i mean just like like uh, some kind of part of the astral belt or whatever i don't know that's a good question yeah. what do they call it now yeah i know it's tiny pluto's like it's like a moon right it's like the size of a moon uh, but I don't know. It's going to be weird when they find aliens on Pluto. Yeah. Mm. Who knows? That's where they're I, coming from. Didn't one of our um, exploring like aircraft finally leave the solar system? Like we put out 1970-something and then it went out and it finally left the solar system, right? Am yeah. I right? The Voyager? I, I, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, dude. Yeah. We launched that shit in the 70s. Finally left the solar finally. system. Finally. It took that's that how, long. That's how far. It's still going though? And we, we it's, Yeah, it's outside of our solar system now. And we're tracking stuff? No. Nope. Oh no! We just we. I mean, I don't know if we're going to receive messages from it anymore, but it's out. We know yeah. it left. Why you that face? <laughs> <laughs> Adam, Adam's always like scientists. It's so mind bending when you yeah here, you, you here, try and think about this. Here stuff. comes that. Uh, how do they really know though? <laughs> well, that's yeah. what, is there a guy over there? <laughs> well, let's see here. Okay, we, <laughs> we sent it out. We have no contact with it, but we found out that it just left. No, I think it did. It is sending signals, and we know it left the out, the, right. the solar system. Yeah. Okay, so obviously we're in communication with it somehow. I feel like so, you're not very confident when you talk about this. No, it's true. It's true. We can look that up too. So Pluto's a dwarf planet. That's what they call it. A oh, dwarf planet. That's, that's, that's full not, of dwarfs. That's so not politically. It's, still, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's politically correct to call it. Oh. It's a that's little, where all the Keebler elves live. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. yeah. Cool. That's good to know. Yeah. That's so where Oompa Loompas. That's where, yeah, that's yeah. where the Oompa Loompas oh, good. come from. Uh, I, I'm so mad at you. What happened? You, here's a, you know, what for the do? listeners, this is what drives me crazy about Sal right here. Mm. I give, if I give him something to read, to watch, anything, like you have to trick him into what? watching or reading anything. Like, I'm not like, a dog. Okay. You don't have to put my what, bills what, in What's your strategy? Because, yeah, I've noticed that too. And you yeah. have to like present it in a very specific So what way. you do is you you send like a message to me in a, the group thread so he sees it and you say like, hey, make sure Sal yeah. doesn't watch Sal this. Sal doesn't watch it. Yeah, yeah. make sure it Sal doesn't like, watch this. This is our inside thing. Yeah, we have to do reverse psychology. What do you mean? Dude, listen, bro. I, <laughs> so first, way we get your attention. Okay, hold on a second. First of all, I got a baby at home. Okay. <laughs> oh, here busy. come the excuses. And I get into shit. So I might have been in the middle of reading some random shit when you sent that. And I can't until I finish. <clears throat> right. Finish the Yeah, thing but here's the thing, though. Okay. So, uh, I, like the the economist thing that I sent over to you guys yeah, to listen to. I watched that. It crea- I know. And what does it do? It creates good dialogue that we can all discuss because we watched it, where now you don't get to be a part of this conversation because Why you, did everybody you know, watch? We're going to have an A and B conversation here. <coughs> did everybody watch Wall Street? Yeah. Yeah. Wall everybody Street. watched the whole. How, what? One episode, two episodes? <clears throat> Three. Oh, you watched three episodes. Yeah, I, I watched it. most of it was, one. It I was really watch engaging. It. You sent the text at like eight thirty at night. Can't no, watch I told you guys the day before. I reminded you again. Yeah, the, the reminder yeah. came. <laughs> <in> that, <laughs> yeah, <night>. so I, <laughs> I know I had to keep reminding you because I watched the whole thing right. So the, over the last three days. So I got to the part where pretty much nowhere. You'll get the first episode. Yeah. So yeah. You, <laughs> about what you know right now. So by the way, so if you haven't seen uh, Wall Street and spelled with like Wahlberg's name W H A W A H L Street, it's. I, I someone had told me to watch it before. And I was like, yeah, it didn't really appeal to me. I'm not really into like following celebrities' lives; it's just not my thing. Mm-hmm. But but he's handsome. Said uh, Justin Bieber. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yep. Yes. You, and you yes. Do follow him. Uh, right? No. What it what I what I really liked about it was it really was just all about his startups. Mm-hmm. I mean, the whole thing is he's got I think eight. Eight or nine. Now, does it like, show which Doug, ones? did you get a chance to watch it or no? I watched the first episode. Yeah. yeah. Did you uh, like it? I figured you would I liked like. it. Yeah. So he's yeah. an apparel company. I just have to sign up for, what's that, HBO Max? Oh, you're not yeah, signed HBO up. I'm not Max. signed up. Yeah. yeah okay. So just borrow that. Adam's. You got to uh, make the leap. Use Adam's passcode. So okay. <laughs> so he, uh, so the whole thing is about that and, and why I wanted to get you to at least like three or four, because I think Justin is right where the pandemic hits, right? Yeah. Right. So, so Wahlberg has got God um, and his. How many of his businesses tank because of that? Well, that's what's Wars. interesting. That's what I wanted to talk. So he's got okay, the restaurants. Which, by the way, okay, how much? How shitty is this? Okay, so funny, right? We were talking trash about. Oh, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bounce all over the place right here because you're just reminding me of stuff. F45. I got a DM from somebody <clears throat> who worked for them, mm-hmm. and it was like, dude, I'm so disappointed in you and your analysis of F45. And mm-hmm. I said, well. 
I only have so much information because I, I, unlike Orange Theory, which I worked at for two years, so I have intimate knowledge of how the company operates and exactly all kinds of information about. It. So I, I don't mind, you know, talking shit about them because I can back it up. Uh, I don't have that much detail about F45. I know a little. I know people that work there and have given me a you little. You know bit. what the workouts look like. Yeah, right? yeah, very vague. But he's like, no, you like. He's like, it is worse than Orange Theory. Oh wow. Here, here is what I did not know they do that I cannot believe. I mean, brilliant business strategy here. Mm-hmm. Terrible for uh, as far as service. So they have a virtual trainer that is getting videoed and is teaching the the classes on TVs in the in there and then the So per- one trainer but <clears throat> m- like multiple locations in class. Yes. Okay. okay. And that's like and uh, let's say it's I don't know this but let's say it's an awesome trainer, really whatever. good tra- whatever. Then the one person or people they have in the studio does not have to be a personal trainer. They're basically they forget, I forget what the title he gives the he like told, motivator. Yes. It's like no. no. So there's not even wow. like, so there's no accountability on biomechanics or you're okay. not going around like watching. You know everybody. what this reminds me of? It reminds me of how the massage places took advantage of the law where the massage places said if there's one certified massage therapist, right. there could be like an like unlimited right. supply of trainees under that person so long as they're in the same room. That's right. They can massage. So now you go get the foot massage <laughs> and it's a bunch of people massaging people for 20 bucks and you can get around the law. This does the same thing because it, hey, it's brilliant. You have a certified trainer, right. but they're on virtual and they're teaching all these classes. Now you don't need ten. You don't trainers. need a bar, which is expensive. You need right. one. Oh yeah. well, uh, this and, is, and a motivator is just a one of one of Orange Theory's biggest overheads that they have. And this again, this because I have intimate knowledge of this business, not as much as F forty five, but I can speculate now on how much money they save because you know that was uh, one of the things that attracted me to uh, OTF was that I was blown away as a you know as a, a group training uh, trainer. That you could make like seventy to ninety dollars an hour, unheard of for group training. Yeah, and even higher. Like if you actually started hitting like where I was like overfilled in classes because you get like yeah, they're paying their trainers well. Yeah, I was up to over a hundred bucks an hour. That's your group training. To do group, group training that was already like mapped out for you. I yeah, mean, that was that's yeah. high. And so you figure if you got eight classes a day, you got eight hundred dollars in trainer fees that you're paying every day. A day, long. a day, right? Per per facility, multiply that by. Now F forty five has this. I mean, brilliant on their part. To be one trainer, you're paying that money. They sure. sh- they shoot it out. They cast and it and they out. might even be able to pay the person two hundred bucks an hour. Shit, They're still saving more. a ton of money. Yeah. yeah, more, right? You could probably you could probably pick five awesome trainers, pay them all super they premium. Teach five thousand people. That's right. Wow, I know, that's, but it's wow. that's cringeworthy. It is cringeworthy. And he taught. And then the other thing he told me was that it's uh, it's even more cardio based than Orange Theory. It's just yeah. And he goes, the weights don't. Well, even from go- what I saw well, on Wall Street, that's what it looked like. It looked like they were just going exercise, 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 exercise. Yeah. So it's just cardio with yes. stuff. Yes. Well, wow. Yeah, and it's interesting. I I actually I, I'm glad to like Courtney was watching it with me, and it's it's always hard for me to bring up business uh, with her and like really like you know be able to describe a lot of like what the conversations are like that we have all the time. You know, with partners and just with struggles of being an entrepreneur and all these types of things. And so I, I enjoyed the show mainly for that because he's like, he's totally putting himself out there, all these different moves he's making, like the hard conversations where they're like ripping his business, a new one. And he's sitting there at the board, you know, taking their advice. And it's like really valuable because, you know, that criticism is going to help him steer back okay. into, you know, a better direction. And, and it's like, you need people like that to really give you like oh, honest I, truth. I think it's crazy what he's doing. Right. So, He's one is a uh, an apparel line, mm-hmm. which we we have our feelings about apparel. Yeah, municipal, line. yeah, and right. and you can really see how how difficult that is, and the, as they portray it. Oh, I mean, you guys have heard me on the podcast. So, I mean, I for the audience that doesn't know this, um, I've tried to start three apparel lines in in my mm-hmm. lifetime and failed at all of them. Right, and the irony is that you know the most successful apparel line that I've ever had is mind pump mm-hmm. and it's only by proxy to what we've the success that we've had right because of I was the thinking about you through that whole thing because like it, it's funny because he's what like the youngest of nine nine people in his family and so his whole struggle he, he'd have like a pair of shoes that he's trying to keep super nice on the surface but on the bottom he's trying to rip them up because he wants a new pair 
care because he's like the ninth kid. Yeah. You know, and so like uh, I just remember like uh, some stories of what you'd had to like make cool. Yeah, you know, yeah. like what you're wearing. And so totally. it was like I always wanted a, an apparel. Base. I did so, like, too. Just, like, so I, 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 so I, I could totally connect with him on many levels. Like right, the the passion to want to do that. But I've also learned the hard way already. Like what a bad idea trying to start an apparel line. I mean, the truth is, and 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 I'm, Wahlberg is the same way. He's not a fashion designer. He's a guy who's in, into fashion, yeah. like myself. But I'm I don't I have no business designing something. And he has just gone out and just hired all these people to do it. People that he likes, which in hopes, and then hopefully with his his amount of you know publicity, with his he, notoriety, you know, that you know hopefully wanted. that's but like it, a winning strategy, right? If you have a lot of uh, notoriety, then you partner with the business person, and mm -hmm. then you use your notoriety, the business person. But it runs just it. goes to show you though how unbelievably difficult it still is. Even a guy as famous as Mark Wahlberg struggling. Right to get this thing off the ground and running. And then, of course, the pandemic hits, and that yeah. totally screws everything. So there's one one business idea that I don't like that he's that he's doing. Mm -hmm. The second one, okay, uh, if you guys, I think you, one of you has family that is in the restaurant business. I do. Okay, the restaurant business, I have oh, friends that are man, in the restaurant what business. A, never. What a one, one of the hardest businesses never. To, to start. I would never do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, this motherfucker doesn't just start a business. He decides, I'm going to start a franchise, which, yeah. okay, normally the progression for normal yeah. people that aren't famous yeah. and have the one. money. <laughs> yeah, you do one. You then, by the way, going to two and three is one of the hardest things to do. To yeah, rep duplicating it. To, to make that culture, you know. That's right. Yeah. That's like, exactly why. Because it's 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 one thing, okay, to build a successful restaurant or any business for that matter and, and, and do really well with it. But you have, as the owner or the creator, you have all your hands on it. Then to replicate that is extremely difficult. Totally. So number two and number three are always really hard. Now, let's say you, you, you crush one, you crush two, you crush three. Now, maybe you're in the discussion of, we, and by the way, that arch looks like five to ten years of getting right. there. Yeah. Then you well, go, oh, ten. maybe we'll do a franchise. Mark decides, I'm going to build a franchise burger joint right out the gate. Okay, now, am I not mistaken? I think, like, didn't they wrap a TV show around it? They did. Of, they did? Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, obviously that's going to help. That's uh, with the Yeah. That's very smart. Oh, it, I think they made some good decisions in that regard, but, uh, again, to his strengths, I think, uh, in terms of, like, the, the entertainment, the film, the documentary of, of the whole thing, I think he's doing the best job in that direction. Oh, I agree. So the, he has, like, eight companies. Uh, the, the only, and I told Katrina as we're watching, I'm like, hate that idea, hate that idea, terrible idea, love that. Mm -hmm. The thing that I think he's doing the best in, and I think where I would, if I'm him, I'm putting most of my energy is in movies and production. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he decided his own production company. That's he his started, space. And you know what he produced? What? McMillions. McMillions. Oh, wow. Um, incredible. Yeah, that, was that was his was... first one. Wow. Okay. Home run, right? Yeah. So that, that's the first and only one that he's produced so far, and they, they crushed. And well, he didn't did. he also produce Entourage like or write it? or I know he's he was I know, part of it. For yeah, sure. I know he's part like, of it, and like, that wasn't part of his production company. Maybe that's what gave him the idea to start uh, yeah. his own. You know what I noticed? So I only watched, uh, I don't know, 40 minutes of the first episode. I noticed he always works out with gloves. You guys notice <laughs> oh, that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Why is he working out with gloves? Oh, hey, 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 I didn't dude, catch that. But they're not even weightlifting gloves. They're like they're like golfers <laughs> I'm gloves. I'm so glad you hit that because the, the, the guy, I should shout this kid out and see if I can find his, his thing right here. Because he did, he sent me a long old DM and it made me laugh. Because first he was roasting me for not tearing into F forty five, and then the way he ended the DM was a long old DM like talking shit all about four. He's like, and then to top it off, Wal Wahlberg wears fucking gloves when he works out, dude, bro. Dude, <laughs> that was such a. I thing. started dying laughing. Remember, I was like, that's such a great. Remember slide. seeing all the dudes with gardening gloves? That was a, that, that was a thing in. for. I don't that get was it. A thing. I don't get it. I so I used to work out for a short period of time. I worked out in the the mesh fingerless. <laughs> Bal Rocky Balboa yeah. gloves, okay? And, that, and that's, okay, listen. I had a stint where I did yeah, like a year I, of that. Listen, yeah. I watched Rocky. I d identified with the dude. Right. I'm like, this is cool. I'm gonna In the 90s, that was did, a thing. Did you have a little rubber ball that you just- you I know, absolutely did, and I brought it to of school. Of course you And did. I bounced it around. Yes, uh, this uh, I did that for a second. So I worked out in gloves for a second. You know what I found out? I'm much better without gloves. Yeah. I'm connected to the weight. Yeah. Plus, I don't want baby hands. Yeah, it, like calluses are cool. Yeah, you know? like you, it's fine. You, you're ever, okay. You know why I realize this? Because then I go help my dad in construction. I go lift something, and I oh my hands hurt. I mean, he'd look at me like, "You disgrace." You know what I mean? <laughs> 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 my hands are weak. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> it's because I wear gloves. Yeah. So uh, I took the gloves off. No, uh, I, I yo. The, then okay. So there's there's those businesses. Then then F45. So the F45 thing. 
I thought was really interesting. So what is it? What does F forty five stand for? Fitness. Yeah. What's forty five? I have no idea. I, yeah, I would like Google, to know Google that it first, too, Doug. I have no idea. Um, the average the age of the member. No. What is it? I don't know. <laughs> forty five minutes, maybe. Forty five oh, yeah, minutes, maybe. That minutes. would be the guess. Yeah, I, bet, yeah. I bet it's forty five yeah, minutes. That's, like good, that's a good. That's a good. That's a good Forty five. Yeah, but it's like fifteen minutes, minutes of warm up, and then they probably do, or cool down, and they do forty five yeah, minutes of exercise. That sounds about right. I know. I'm sure that's a, the gimmick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, what is it? Forty five means functional. Minutes, boom! Hit that one. Functional forty five minutes. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's so clever. So smart. So you could open an F thirty and crush them. <laughs> yeah. Never yeah. uh, ten minute. Something abs. about Mary. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Six minute abs. Six minute abs. <laughs> five minute abs. Yeah. You could do five minutes. So he, he the way it, it starts off is he is uh, negotiating with them right to work out a partnership. Mm-hmm. He does their class falls in love with it. And by the way, okay, this is another fault of his of lack of self-awareness that he doesn't see. He is the typical person. We just talked about this on the podcast the other day. The type of person that is attracted to the the cortisol junkie. Oh, yeah. He is a grinder. This dude is working 12 plus hours. Of course hours. he loves that. Of yeah. course he's driven to high intensity hard training. And it, it, never in his mind, this is, this is when you don't have experience coaching normal people, does it cross his mind that you are an anomaly, dude. Mm-hmm. You are some. You are somebody that may actually do this way of working out for the rest of your life because you're attracted yep. to that way of training. For the rest of the population, this is not conducive, mm-hmm. and so he never makes that connection. Decides he's going to partner up with F45. He's in negotiations for months, right? And right when he like locks it in, and they decide to do it, then the, the pandemic, the hit. pandemic wow, hits. That's yeah, terrible. That's right where I'm at, and yeah. they're all lo- they're all locked that's up. That's terrible. So you know, I, don't you know, know I noticed too. I noticed crazy. that the, in the first episode, the owner of the one he works out at wasn't a fitness guy at all, Mm-mm. and then the owner of the supplement company that he works with isn't a fitness guy. Yeah, you know one of the one of the for me one of the hallmarks of a fitness fad getting ready to crash is when non-fitness people jump in. Yeah. I remember when this happened with Curves. Mm-hmm. Curves was blowing up, and I remember I was looking into buying one. I'm like, this is the <laughs> fastest growing franchise. What's this all about? And I went in, and I met some of these franchise owners, and they didn't. none of them worked out. I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, okay. This I mean, there's, crash. There, there's some truth to that, right? Like, <clears throat> right now, we're talking about some, like, some behind-the-scenes stuff for the, the audience. We are looking for somebody to come in on, like, a internship. Basically. In fact, we're, we're talking to someone who we're potentially going to start in the next couple of weeks. To give them the opportunity to take our apparel and actually turn it into what it's what it potentially can be, <laughs> right? And I just got out of a meeting right now with uh, Katrina and Choki, and they're 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 wanting to hear my expectations of, of what I want. And I said, well, I'm not looking for somebody who's going to come in and just take the responsibility of like the three of us that have been managing it and just do the same thing. And so, and I know, <clears throat> and I told Katrina and Choki, I said. I saw you guys are looking for what you guys are looking for is somebody who is, you know, fashionable and posts well on Instagram and like likes apparel and is into that stuff. I'm not interested in someone like that. So the person that you guys think is going to take this, I'm really intrigued if you if they're going to be able to do this. What I want is I don't care if this person has any fashion or is connected at, at that at all. I want someone who understands at a scale of company because we already have an incredibly large base for them. It's already a, a successful business already. Mm-hmm. I'm looking for someone to take it to the stratosphere and that, and we need somebody who knows how to do that. And that is like nurturing and value building and scaling email marketing. Totally, di- totally different. Totally different. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, I don't give a shit if you know anything about apparel. I don't like, I really, I, I, I because we're already there. Yeah. yeah. And, We've already got the, that's audience. right. And that's it's not surface. There. And that's not to say that there's, there wouldn't be value in that. So that, that's me just kind of challenging that point that like you don't necessarily always need a fitness person to be running a fitness company so long as you are surrounded around the right people that are kind of mentoring you in that situation. In some ways, yes. But fitness is, you guys know as well as I do, it's not a business like any other business in the sense that you could take and run successful. Look, look at the people that ran Home Depot that came to 24 or Circuit City or all these other yeah, you're companies. Right. Like it's not a numbers There's game a disconnect. in the same way. Like a, a gym, you could, li- I, I used to do this all the time. They put me in a gym and I'd increase their revenue by 50% in a month. No, no different staff. There was no different marketing. It was all in the atmosphere and culture of the club. I ran gyms that were you know, ceilings breaking down, the pools broken, and we would crush because of the team. That isn't, that's not the same. As I know. The- I'm searching for an example that I can compare 
you know, what it's like to scale a fitness business in comparison to other things. Because I've had the opportunity. It's hard to find it. Uh, There's nothing like it. No. Because, it, and, and what I when I look at, like, you know, the success that you had in operating clubs and, and what all of us had running clubs, the thing that I that I can say that we had all in common, even though we're very different, is it's a it's very much so a, a people business. And, and the culture, it, it, even though culture is important in every business, mm -hmm. It's it's a whole different <clears throat> monster with fitness because the you rely so heavily on uh, emotion and and the motivation and the keeping the people coming back. Mm -hmm. Where another business you can look at like purely like an analytics and Absolutely. be like, oh, these margins are you're off looking here. at it like yeah. products. Yes, because right. here's what happened with, with this is, I mean, this is a classic story. It's happened to Twenty Four Fitness people. I was in a meeting. I remember some of these meetings. I was one of the top managers, and I'd be in these meetings. And these people came in from other large companies, very successful, and they'd say things like, okay, 24 Fitness has the most clubs. We got more clubs than anybody. We got great equipment. Nobody could beat us on, on those two things. All we need to do is have the best prices. People don't care about anything else. Right. Stop giving them a tour. Stop asking about their goals. Mm -hmm. Here's all you need to do. Show them the best price, and then we'll win. And I remember being in this in this meeting, thinking, "Okay, this is it's almost time for me to leave now because yeah. this is." Yeah. And Just I remember, get him in. I remember my district manager, who's a fitness guy. He looked at me and he says, "I have a question." He looks at me and he goes, uh, and he looks at the guy and he goes, "How many memberships have you sold? How many gyms have you worked in?" He goes, "None." And he goes, "What about you, Sal?" I said, "I don't know, thousands." He goes, "I'll trust him over you." He says, "This is very different." People aren't buying shit when they buy a membership. They're buying a dream. Mm -hmm. They're not come back. And they don't even come back for the equipment. Yeah, People right. don't care about. I know they say they care about the equipment. They actually don't care. Yeah. I've run clubs that crushed uh, in comparison to clubs that were close to us. Yeah, way worse equipment. Way like it, way less amenities. All that stuff. It's all about the the culture. I mean, you, know you were in Capital McKee. It, yeah, for, for yeah. God's sake, retention and you got, is so much more important in this business. You know, maybe it's, it's maybe so different. Okay, maybe I can maybe I can draw a, a parallel. The, the thing that comes to mind that's closest is like a bar, mm. right? There's you can get alcohol anywhere. You can buy alcohol at a discounted price. Or what, what makes a little pub? Yes, just like a pub. Yes, yeah, yes, yes, crush yes. over the pub that's actually right next door or three. It's the it's the environment, the culture, yeah, true. the very, feeling, very you, much of the social aspect. Right, because I mean they all serve the same alcohol. In yeah, fact, you can get some, Jack Daniels here, there. That's whatever. right, and you could save even more money by going to Costco and buying the alcohol. So it's you are going there for the experience, yep. and that is why people show up to gyms. Yes, you want good trainers. Yes, you need to have equipment. Yes. Yes, being clean. Those are all things that are important mm -hmm. and help. Just like having a pub that has, you know, nice bar stools mm -hmm. and clean bathrooms. Like, yeah, that shit matters. But real, I, I mean, I've gone to. I remember my favorite pub that I used to go to had disgusting bathrooms, mm -hmm. but it didn't matter because the the I loved going there and sitting at the bar because the bartenders that would interact with me and we became friends mm -hmm. and knew the people that were there. It's that environment that's what drew me in and, and kept me coming. And that's why yeah. fitness is not a, like a business that you could look at and say, oh, it's working over here. All I have to do is plug it in mm -hmm. and it's going to be successful. In some cases, I could see that working, but that's when the fad is at its peak, right? So when the fad, when the fad starts to fall, like they all do, the people that survive are the fitness people, not the people that went in and just looked at the numbers and said, this yeah. business makes sense. Yeah. And there is, yep. so, you know, I feel like we're picking on poor Mark Wahlberg here. Uh, he, you know, back to his apparel and municipal. He wears gloves. The, <laughs> I, I'm so glad you brought that up because that's exactly what the DM said. Oh, full finger gloves too. Yeah. Not even the, not even the tips stick out. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's touching the weights. <laughs> what are you doing? So, you know, uh, the municipal, right? So, like, let's take Viore for example. Like, why did Viore do so well? You know, you had somebody like Joe who. Not only was he passionate about fish, uh, fit, um, fashion, he had the right connections mm -hmm. with making a clothing line. And most importantly, he filled a gap and a need in the market. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but the athleisure wear market was skyrocketing at the time. And, and, the, it and was the, catering to women, man. Yeah. Lululemon. Yep. Mm -hmm. Lululemon dominated that space. It mm -hmm. was completely targeted to, to women. Very, mm -hmm. very little market towards men there. And he saw this huge opportunity of, okay, here's a, a rising market right now in athleisure wear, mm -hmm. which didn't exist just a decade before. Nobody is serving to men very well. I, th I, this is my, this is my, that when I see municipal, cool stuff. He went out and he and he's having it designed all really yeah, nice. Yeah, but he's competing in a very busy Yeah, he's space. competing against Under Armour. 
He's competing against Lulu and Vriol right now. It's just like, and you're relying 100% on you've got enough capital and money to go hire the right people, and you are famous enough and a big enough brand yeah. mm-hmm. that hopefully— Now, that definitely can help, right? That oh, can definitely yeah. help. But I mean, without yeah. all the other stuff, that's going to be rough. Well, so this is, what, this is why I'm so intrigued by this show, because uh, there's a chance, and this just goes to show you, like, you know, technically, Wahlberg Burgers, the apparel— uh, F45, all three of these, I believe, should fail. I believe if I even one of us was running it, decided to come up with the idea, you would run out of money or you would run in the red so long, you would you would eventually walk away with it. But mm. because of his tenacity, which I love, and mm-hmm. his you know willingness to figure it out, like whatever, no fail type of attitude, and his- has, He's willing to delegate too yeah, and, and bring on- His like connections experts, and yeah. his reach and- he may be able to turn all of these around. And mm-hmm. so that's what I'm most interested to see is like... Well, you're rooting for him, too. I am. Yeah, yeah. I like him. I like him, and I want to see him succeed. He seems like a, a genuine uh, person. Well, what I like about it, too, is just, yeah, it humanizes it a lot. Like, the whole celebrity thing. Like, because he's a massive, like, A-list star. Like, he doesn't need to be doing all these things. But, like, you see, the, like, the real struggles through the whole thing. All these businesses are real businesses that have, like, lots of problems. It doesn't just work, like, like easy because you have celebrity <clears throat> behind it. No. It just doesn't work like No that. business just works. Either. Yeah. No. But no, people man. think that. People perceive a business if you got, oh, I got, you know, uh, The Rock to endorse this. It's yeah. going to fucking explode. And, and and you know, it just doesn't work like that. No, yeah. dude. I was having this conversation yesterday with uh, with Scott. We were talking about business and entrepreneurship. And I'm like, he goes, you know, we were talking about entrepreneurs. I said, entrepreneurs are the only people that will work 80 hours a week to avoid working 40. And this is a true, exactly. this is a true statement, you know? And I think if people enter entrepreneurship with the false understanding, like they think- Freedom, less, oh, man. less work. <laughs> oh, way less work. And you're going to make money. You work money. more, but you enjoy your work more. But it, is, right. it is a passion-driven thing. And if you crush, you get to that point. But there's a lot of eating shit. <laughs> you eat shit for years yeah. before you get to that. And you fail. You fail often. Well, and there's a, there's a very much so a reality that you may never get there, but you may at least create enough freedom of that. I own this. I make a living off right. of it. And, and that, because that's the real- First of all, 80% chance you fail. Then if you fall in even the 20% chance of being successful, successful can also be- Just taking care of yourself. Taking care of yourself right. and having the freedom of it, it coming and going as you please because it's your business, right. right? But the likelihood of you actually crushing and then going out there and competing- Now, you know what's funny? Dogs. What's funny is that this here's how you know you're, kind of, you're made to be an entrepreneur. <clears throat> if you're listening to the- you're going to probably fail. Yeah. And if you do and succeed, you're not you. going to, and you're listening and you're getting excited. Yeah. Yeah. You're probably an entrepreneur. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, exactly. that shit just makes me excited. You're like, like ooh, bring it. Yeah. Exactly. Now, yeah. now, if you're listening going, oh man, that sucks. I don't think yeah. that's you're probably not. No, I think that's a characteristic that you should. I mean, there's a lot of people that consider, like, should I go do my own thing? Like, if it doesn't excite you that the odds are stacked against you, you probably shouldn't do it. And and if it does excite you, you're probably meant to do something like that. Now like, that now I that, love I, I for the longest time I, that was I've always loved being the underdog. Of I've course. always loved being told I can't. Of like, course, let let me prove you otherwise. Actually, being on the top is yeah. boring, in my opinion. It's it's not as exciting as when you're the person that people are doubting right. and personally. And I, I'm almost I'm almost like when I get to the top, I find something else. To be the bottom end because right. it kind of gets a little boring. Because you want to keep promoting growth. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Speaking of experiences, I've been mean to ask you. You and Doug went to get a physical. Yeah. And you said you had a crazy experience. Yeah. But uh, I want to hear what happened. I know I, I forgot, totally forgot to bring that. this up in the last podcast. Yeah, we uh, so we were, we were getting our, our checkups and we went to this place. It was like it wasn't like a big hospital or anything, just one of those like little dock in the box places. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so we're kind of waiting out. We had to wait outside. There was somebody in there already, a family, and uh, we're just kind of like talking, doing our thing. All of a sudden, we hear like this like crazy gut wrenching screaming, like just like ah, like this a kid, child. A child was screaming. It was like. Probably like 11, 12, you'd say, Doug, yeah, something like that. Sounds about right. Yeah, this this tall, like this Indian family, and uh, this 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 poor kid. Oh my god! So he he was like literally like reaching for things in there, like ah, like like they were like torturing him or something inside like, the doctor's inside office. Inside the doctor's office, sort of grabbing uh, some of some of the like the the pamphlets, the flyers, the things hanging on the door, and was like shredding them to bits. Like what was knocking things off the table? Bust open the door, like runs out. Did they and give him the Johnson and Johnson vaccine? I, dude, <laughs> exactly. What happened? Exactly. It sounded like he was being abused. Oh, it, no. it was. Yeah. It was. It was like real. Like we were looking at each 
you're like, oh my God, do we need to like intervene? Like what's happening in there? How you awkward. Know? Yeah. And so he, he, it just didn't stop there, dude. It, he's running around the parking lot. What? He gets in the car. The parents finally like kind of get him into the car. And then the kid's just like kind of like rocky. And then all of a sudden busts open the door and he's like, ah! runs again ah! and i'm like oh my god and then and then it doesn't stop there so that so then you know they come out they're apologizing you know to to everybody and all this stuff and i'm like oh my god this is crazy like he he then like uh the, i think the dad was in there like trying to wrap up with whatever he had to sign off and then you know they, they get the kid the kid gets out again and he's looking around and then he sees like me and Doug and he's just like looking at us and he's just like starts reaching. Oh, no. And then he he reaches and he grabs Doug's arm and he's like, 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 take me with you. What? You know, what? like, yes, no, this didn't happen just once. It happened, I think, two or three times. What? And he made a beeline over for me and he was looking at me with these eyes that said, save me. Oh, yes. my God, bro. But, but he couldn't verbalize it. Did like, you guys call the police? Like, well, no. here's the thing. So it looked like it was his family. Yeah, and he also it looked like. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it looked like his family. Number one, but Little number white two, kid, two Indian parents. Yeah, it matched. It was a match. Yeah. Was a, uh, <laughs> but but yeah, so it, so we knew that like like there was some kind of de- developmental. I was thing. saying, was was, that we suspected I, I he had something he's on going the spectrum, on. Spectrum, right? Some I mean, kind autistic of, or something. So yeah, so that's exactly what what was going on. He he was autistic, and and yeah. and I I'm assuming he got a shot, you know, and and then, uh, and then thought that like every. Everybody was like, he didn't oh. trust his parents. He didn't uh, trust anybody. That makes sense. He was raging. And it was so heartbreaking, you know, because we were, we were just like, oh my God. Like, I just want to hug the kid, you know, but it's okay, man. It's okay, buddy. You know, and he just, oh. he was just, ah. oh my God, what a wild experience. It was, had. it was terrifying. And then they looked at you guys and like, all right, you're next. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, okay. <laughs> well, I, was, I was like, I don't want to have whatever he just had, <laughs> yeah. you know, like, uh, can, can I have the other shot? Dude, wow. I feel, I feel so bad i know i mean i have i have friends who have uh children on on the spectrum and it can be very challenging like yeah. one of them if you change their routine just a little bit like yeah. their routine has to be exactly the same every day and if you change it just a bit there's just this insane meltdown and so it's it a gave, challenge it, oh my god it, it made me immediately i was driving home thinking about it and everything i just couldn't even imagine like what the parents like because i'm not i'm sure that's not the the only time that's happened you know or they're just like trying to explain to people around the mm. the you know the scene the situation of what's going on uh you know what what's happening that must be so difficult like life uh, for them is, is something else so no, I, my heart goes out to them for wow. sure no, bless parents who have children with uh with needs like that it's yeah. just a, it's very very challenging and i can't even imagine because you know you love your kid you, i mean shit doesn't matter i love my kids no matter what right so you'll just you'll die for them right but boy what a sacrifice but it was like man do, what do we like we were like just innocent bystanders we're like what do we now do? your instinct yeah. right your instinct is yeah, like, i was like i'm gonna help this kid him. yeah yeah you know? Beat up his dad yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like, what are they doing in there, dude? He's I'm my son. Start shaking people up. That's yeah. probably a pretty good assessment, though, right? Autistic kid. He probably just got a shot because mm-hmm. it came out of that, right? They're in the doctor's office, and all of a sudden he screams bloody murder. And then all of a sudden he starts acting out. Like, I bet you. And that's how you probably feel as a kid, right? Like, your parents, like, betrayed you. Yes. You know? I like, saw it in his eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. was just like, ah, how's, uh, that's I mean, I, that, I don't you know, feel safe. That's like, I'll never forget the first shot that I had Maximus get the first oh. time, he, even as a baby. That sucks, dude. Yeah, even as a baby. I mean, that really my heart out. I remember he looked at you like, yeah, you like, me, yeah, because you, you know, this happen, you're Dad? distracting him and like talking to him this and that. And then all of a sudden he gets a shot and then he like eyes just start watering and looks at you like, oh my god, dude. Till this day, this like is like you betray him. Till this yeah. day, it haunts me when I when my son went to his first day of school. I remember building oh, it up. The fingers. Hold oh, on. bro, I'm building it up and oh, you're so brave, buddy. You're gonna be brave, right? You're not gonna cry. Oh yeah, Papa, I'm brave. I can't wait to go to school. Then we go there and he's not leaving me at all. And then the teacher's like, all right, parents, you got to go. So I'm like, okay, buddy. And he grabs and clings onto my shirt. Yeah. And the teacher literally was pulling him away from me and I had to peel his little hands off, uh, off my shirt. Yeah. And he's looking at me like, father, <laughs> why have you left <laughs> why me? Why would you abandon me? Why would you do this to yeah. me? And yeah. I left and I, I walked into my studio. This is when I had my studio. And I remember my clients were waiting for me. And they saw me, and I walked right by them into the bathroom because I was starting to tear up. Yeah. <laughs> and I come out like, "What happened?" I know, First day of school. Brutal, I'm like, oh, I get it. Oh, that's oh it's terrible. <laughs> Speaking of craziness, did you guys hear this? Okay, so mm. we know that the 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 recall is happening for Gavin Newsom here in California, right? Yeah. Okay. Did have it you, pass? Have you? Uh, that's going to be on the ballot, pretty much, right? Okay. So there's going to be a recall, right? Let's so now this. they have to vote to kick him out and replace him with someone else. 
Guess who has just announced that they're going to run on the Republican ticket? Uh, Are we going to like it? Caitlyn Jenner. Republican? Well, first off, she's been a Republican forever. Yeah, I actually forever. knew that. Okay. Yeah, but, but I didn't know that. Yes, yes. I remember so, I watched the roast of somebody on Comedy Central, and yeah, and then they brought that up, yeah. too. It was like, oh, was so like, really? She's running as a Republican to beat, uh, to, to get Gavin Newsom out. Now, here's my theory on the whole thing, because when I see this, I'm like, this sounds crazy. This yeah, is insane. Yeah, this sounds like... Here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking this is a ploy by the Democrats to split the vote oh. to keep Gavin in office because a lot of Democrats are mad at Gavin. A lot of like old school Democrats are like ready to get him out. They're ready to vote for another person, but they don't want to vote for a Republican. But Caitlyn Jenner, uh, Kardashian, you know, transgender, kind of liberalish. I'm going to vote for them. And then the other people are going to vote for the other Republican that's going to split the vote. Yeah. Gavin, they're not going to get the, enough votes to win. Gavin gets to stay in office. That's See, my that's my. I feel like it would idea. split the Democrat no. vote more. I feel like there would be Democrats that would consider voting. There has to be enough votes to kick him out. So 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 if there isn't enough votes, he stays in. Right. And and can only one person uh, run against him? Can mo no. no, multiple people. Oh, okay. So he's oh. going to be, I think it's going to be Caitlin. And there's oh going to be another God. Republican or whatever. <laughs> And uh, Caitlyn is now there are some people are saying Caitlyn could potentially win, right? Because it's the one Republican that would actually attract enough Democrats to vote for her. That's what I was thinking. Mm. I think it's more like the Democrats are in the back going, oh, yeah, this is gonna be great because it's going to split the vote uh -huh. and, keep and it's going to make sure Gavin stays. Because remember, Gavin is like he was like the sweetheart of the Democrat Party. He was supposed to be first California. Next, you're up and coming for president. Good looking, young, right. slick, whatever. And if he gets kicked out, that's it. Terrible idea. He, he gets he's kicked a out. Slime ball, he dude. Is really? a snake. Yeah. He's not making president. Dude. Well, he's got definitely the, not. Well, now. they wanted him to. That's they, for sure. He, they were grooming him. And if yeah. if he gets kicked out, if he gets recalled, that's it. His political career is over. So they're like hail Mary, trying to fix this whole thing. Is that the normal progression? Is to go to like California or New York, and then you end up being like one of the? Not necessarily, but if you're a governor of the most populated state in uh, in the in the country. You are, he's already kind of a celebrity. He's one of the well, more well-known uh, governors. He's also got the look, right? He's kind of good-looking, and he's got the nice suits and all that stuff, and he's got a little bit of charisma. He's young. He's not, like, super old, like, you know, Grandpa Biden or whatever. That's the <laughs> yeah. guy that they're like, oh, he's going to be on the, you know, on the next – he's going to on the roster. He's, on the, he's, on, he's ready to come in next. But if he gets kicked out – that's it. I so still, that's my theory. My theory is that they're behind the scenes. They're like, hell yeah. I still, yeah. I think the Rock is coming. That's what you're gonna see next. Uh he would crush the Rock. He is. Yeah. yeah. No, he's he's already been doing stuff. He's already been doing stuff. He to would like, he would crush. You know, How he, would you beat him? I, I he's the most likable person I in the know. world. I know. That's why I think he's. Why would he want to do it? Uh, like, that's what I said. Power, bro. Yeah. Come on. When you get that much money, the only thing that's he's interesting on top. When man. you make that much money, it's okay, true. The only other thing that's interesting to you, especially if you're not a religious person, you're yeah. gonna is power, dude. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you already made all the money. He's already got all the money, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't see him doing a lot of yoga, so I think he's gonna right. go the direction of power. Right? Well, so. Arnold, you know, <laughs> kind of set the stage for that, didn't he? Yeah. Now before that was Reagan. Reagan was an actor, but he wasn't yeah. like a huge actor. Like uh, like Arnold was, and Arnold, remember he was a, he was a, he's the last Republican Bring governor Arnold back of uh, of California. Um, Arnold, if he could run for president, he would. I think he would have. He can't because he's but not a natural he's born not, citizen. Right. But if he could, he literally exemplifies the American dream. If you like the, what the American dream and he's means, a, and he's a, he's not like a hardcore Republican. He is he not was, at all. He was he's like he's a, like a liberal conservative. Yes, yes, he was married to a Kennedy, super connected to the old school. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. He's the celebrity, so he's in the Hollywood, yeah. you know, type of deal. And Arnold's smart, right? He knows how to play that game or whatever. Well, how many Republicans are going to be running for this? Like that has me know. worried now. Like, because if everybody's voting in a different direction, and 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 then that doesn't like pass through. Well, like, we're screwed. what the party will need to do is get behind one person. You yeah. know, and so is that going to be Caitlin? I don't know, yeah. but I mean, it'll be great. <laughs> I wouldn't mind. I tell you what, I look. I don't know her. Anything's better than Gavin. Yes. Whatever, anything. Yeah, I don't know her. Pol it, it, I don't know her any policies. Other Democrat that much. would be better than oh, Gavin. Yeah, I don't know the policies that much. All I know is that he's in the Kardashian family, which is negative fifty points for me. However, right, Caitlyn's like we have too many taxes and too many regulations, and I was like, oh. I kind of like that. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> so so far, you got hmm. you got my attention. <laughs> yeah, Caitlin, you already got Woman of the Year. Can you win right. this too? Can you do a better. Pro yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Yeah. Anyway, hey. So earlier, uh, I wanted to bring this up on the podcast. I thought this was a really good point. We've talked about this a little bit, 
but I think it's something to 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 hammer home. So I was on a, I was on uh, uh, Rich Gaspari and uh, John Romano's podcast this morning, and they were interviewing me about the book and about resistance training, and then we were talking about the rebound effect from when you stop exercise, right? So if you're working out and then you stop, you you can expect to lose some of the progress that you made, and the longer you stop, the more the progress you lose, right? So you'll lose your performance, you may gain some body fat, all that stuff. Yeah. And we were comparing the rebound effect from stopping resistance training to the rebound effect from stopping cardio. So let's say cardio is your primary source of exercise versus resistance training be your primary form of exercise. And you stop them both for a month. Which one results in a greater fat loss in a harder position when you come back? Cardio. Of mm. course. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and the point being, with the cardio, you're manually burning the calories yourself. With the resistance training, you've sped up your metabolism. But here's the other part. Resistance training uh, builds muscle. Muscle memory sticks around. Mm -hmm. It leaves a. It literally leaves a memory of your fitness, and the to get your fitness back is much faster well, with resistance training. Anything here's else. the other part. Mm -hmm. Cardio, the, the returns on cardio begin to diminish way quicker, too. So yeah. let's say you haven't done any cardio for, let me say, six months or longer. And, you know, day one, you go out for your run, you know, like for sure, burn a ton of calories because it's extremely difficult. But the body adapts to cardio really quick. So within two or three weeks, you'd be surprised how fast you could get back up to right. your, your you know, mile time or whatever it is that you use to gauge like I'm back in cardio shape. And along that comes with that is the returns mm -hmm. because it doesn't have all the other benefits like building muscle does as far as metabolism boosting. All you get is the benefits of burning calories. The yes. body gets efficient at it within two weeks. Yes. So you're burning the calories manually. In a resistance training, the fat loss effects come from this kind of secondary effects of building strength, building and they muscle. compound, and, yeah. and they compound and speeding up your metabolism. That's right. right. If you lose, let's say it takes you ten years to gain thirty pounds of muscle, and then you stop working out for six months and lose it all, you'll gain those thirty pounds back in probably six months. It might have taken you ten years to gain it the first time. When you lose it and you gain it back really fast. It's oh, yeah. ridiculously fast. Muscle memory is Mus beautiful. Resistance training gives you that muscle memory in a very different way than other forms of exercise. So it's it's the closest you can get to permanent results. There's no such thing as permanent results, but it's the closest you can get with a form of exercise. And I wanted to make that point because as I was talking to them, I'm like, man, this is something, this is a great selling point for resistance training. So many selling points, but this is a great one because the average person stops working out at some point for a little mm -hmm. while or misses a few weeks and they always worry about am i gonna totally get out of shape well that's what's so frustrating about it. that's why it feels like such a grind because it is like mm -hmm. if, you, if you're approaching it as like the determiner for you to lose fat is always i have to have my cardio you know and i have to make sure i'm keeping burning it's 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 a losing race yep totally, yeah. totally. i tell you guys that i'm thinking about dabbling in the carnivore diet for a while Oh really? Yeah. So did, now you do. Ooh. Why? What are you, are you noticing? <clears throat> did you see? Did you see um, Paul Saladino's post just a, like two days ago? Oh yeah, with the guy with his legs. Oh, yeah, you told me about. Yeah, yeah. So my my psoriasis. That's like the worst part is my psoriasis on my on my shin. Right. So and it was no. It's nowhere near as bad as him. Um, it looks it, like it's affecting your calves. <laughs> <laughs> it is actually. It's eating. It's eating. That's exactly my problem. It's eating your gains. It's not my fault that I have small calves. Sorry. It's the psoriasis has been eating. Sorry, away. I gotta I gotta put some heat on you because of the, the body image shit I've been getting on YouTube. And then Adam's in the meat, comments. My chest. Adam is literally comment. I saw a comment. And it's like Adam. You know, yeah. Sal has narrow, narrow shoulders, shoulders or something. Yeah. And I'm like, what an. A and I'm like, it's Adam. <laughs> you son of a bitch. He's so pushing you guys. So anyway, you're, you're stoking the fire. So you're trying to do this to see so if you can. Get not, I, I, by the way, I haven't committed to it yet. Okay. I'm, I'm like, I'm going back. And part of me saying it to you guys is wondering if I should and uh, whatever. You should do it at least for a month. That's my opinion. So that's what I thought. Okay. I, I thought I could commit to 30 days. I can do anything for 30 days, right? Yeah. Because to be honest with you, I really have no desire to do it because I know that I would never follow that diet long term. Yeah. But if it did clear up my psoriasis as well as much as it cleared up this guy's psoriasis that he was posting about and then I slowly started to introduce to the, figure out what the hell is yeah to figure out what is the the big offender on me mm -hmm. um you know that that could be extremely valuable right so cuz I, I never thought it was vegetables but it could possibly be I mean, I could be, there could be something like asparagus, which I eat a lot of, or spinach, which I love eating all the time. And it just, it doesn't, and this is what I, I love about things like the carnivore diet or elimination diet, because, 
you know, here you have someone like myself who is, you know, for the most part, you know, eliminated gluten. I've got my dairy in check. I, I've minimized my sugar and I've done all these things, but and all of them had, have had an effect. Yeah. And all of them have definitely helped. Right. But it, I've not like completely suppressed or got rid of my psoriasis. It's still, and it still definitely has its moments where it kind of flares mm -hmm. up. Um, and so what I haven't teased out is kind of some healthy foods is some, or what I would consider healthy. Right. So mm -hmm. like, you know, I eat a lot of avocado, I eat a lot of spinach, I eat a lot of asparagus, things that most people would deem healthy and probably not causing any sort of gut inflammation to do that. But it, maybe it is. Well, yeah. You definitely have to up your butcher box order. I'll so tell you that right I now. I know. Well, you, that a part of why I was bringing that up was to ask you like, you know, you're the only one that's ran the carnivore diet and mm -hmm. done it like the most consistently. Like, what is what did your butcher box order look like? And uh, you almost had to like triple the order because uh, again, I was still eating too low of calories. Calories. That's is what really, I'm concerned yeah, about. That's that's the big concern. Because you get so satiated, I could, it'd be hard to eat more it's than tough. a couple thousand. How would you eat more? Ground meat actually helped a bit. Too. So that's what okay. That's so, what I thought. Yeah, I, I thought because of the fat content. Yes. it's more say it's more uh, palatable. More right. palatable, and you can add you know the seasoning and all that. I could just kind of get through a lot more of that versus like a, a big old steak and the thing is too like you know the red meat it, for me i felt the nutrients and everything else you know more from that as i was eating versus because i tried to throw in some fish and, and some chicken uh but uh you know i was i felt a lot better when i was just sticking more with red meat so now what do you guys think about this because i don't know how much i'm gonna like i like i'm not looking forward to just like meat 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 and and this is i, I think this is okay and correct me if i'm wrong i'm gonna I think maybe I might run all meat and like sweet potato. So I have like a carb that can go with it. And the likelihood that sweet potato is the the offender of all things, I think is highly unlikely. I think it would be more likely to be either some sort of a nightshade or some or a, a vegetable that I'm consuming on the regular basis or like an avocado or I think that has like hist high histamine. No, like no. I think it's something that's more probably like that. The least likely to cause problems would be fruit. So fruit would be, that's what what Paul would say, right? So fruit is a part of the plant that the plant wants you to eat. Right. Uh, stems and roots and leaves are the parts of the plant the plant doesn't want you to eat. And those are the ones that most likely cause Okay, so maybe issues. maybe do like berries. Because I feel like I just need to have something yeah, yeah, yeah. else so, it, like, so it's not just meat all the time. Because that's the thing too. Like everybody thinks that this is why I what I don't like about diets, right? We, we, ride a, like we ride a thing like the carnivore diet or we come up with the ketogenic diet. And we get so like it's the the principles behind it that are that are really valuable. It's and just not, learn some of the lessons, right? But don't like become religious about it, right? So I I feel like I could I can eliminate a lot of things that that are more likely to be the offender and narrow it down to maybe just a couple things in my diet. So I have some sort of variety, but I'm following kind of a similar carnivore. Yeah, diet. that because you could easily do that, and then if you still have issues, <laughs> then eliminate the berries. Yeah. The other thing too is your seasoning. So you got to be careful with seasoning because mm -hmm. you want to avoid garlic, you mm -hmm. want to avoid pepper. Oh, really? So stick to just salt, right? Because uh, people who are highly reactive to plants mm -hmm. um, oftentimes are reactive to things oh, like that's garlic a really and good, pepper. That's really good advice, Tim, because I, I season the shit out of like yeah, my no, you would want uh, just, just salt, salt, yeah, oh, okay. salt and meat. And, okay, yeah, that's the ultimate like elimination, and then you add. Add and you and you go from there. Okay. Yeah, but ground beef would see it's going to be really hard, right? It's going to be really hard to get enough calories. It's You're probably going to be really full. You're probably not going to feel super strong, or whatever. But here's the other side: if it is triggering autoimmune issues in you, you might feel amazing. Well, because it's, it might not just be psoriasis. You might not even realize well, that. Well, and I think that's where most people like claim they have this like energy boost yes. and they have this you know performance boost in the gym is really that they're fighting internally in their body so much yes. with all these. Yeah. What do you think? It, so, and this is why I don't want to. I don't want to go full on carnivore. I really don't. Like, mm -hmm. I, I feel like I can do this and narrow down to a couple foods and stick like. So, would you think it would be more likely that sweet potato or or white rice would be? I think I digest both of them fine. I don't think either one of them affect me, but if I were to eliminate down to one, what would you choose? I would probably go with sweet potato. Right. Uh, That's but, what I thought. But yeah. you know, here's the weird thing, dude. I've worked with, so I used to work with someone I know, I know. who did uh, gut testing, and this is before it became a popular thing, and it was so weird, some of the things that they would find with people. Like, mm. I remember this one lady- I know was, I've seen things that are avocado. Like, that's why I listed those: avocado, mm -hmm. spinach, asparagus. I had apples. There was this yeah, woman who histamine she, producing. She couldn't yeah. figure out why she had uh, not psoriasis, but the other one. What's the eczema. Other one? Eczema. She couldn't figure out eczema. Why can't? It was apples. She got rid of apples, and it went away. It was, for whatever reason, her body was 
having this immune response to apples of, of all things. Now, my theory is that it's it's most likely a food that you one eat a lot of, and totally. you you ate a lot of when you were over consuming, right? Because right, that, yeah. that's how it would go down, right? So. It, hence why I think, obviously, ice cream is obviously <laughs> a major offender for me because I would pile it on at the end of a 4,000-calorie sure. day, eat another 2,000 calories in ice cream. Sure, my gut was inflamed. Sure that it gets into my bloodstream. Now it recognizes that as a an offender, right? Right, right, right. So, and then it, there comes the autoimmune response. So that's pretty obvious to me. Same thing with sugar. Like, I knew I was, when I'm when I'm more likely to abuse sugar, abuse dairy, it w is when I'm in an overconsumption place. Mm. Sweet potatoes? I'm normally leaning out. If I'm eating sweet potatoes or just rice, things like that, I feel like it's less likely that that would have been a food that I was when yeah. I was over consuming. So. Yeah, no, that makes sense. No, uh, Saladino said uh, meat, and then the, the next ones that are least likely would be fruits and honey. Would be that. And by the way, it could be like zucchini. Zucchini is like a fruit, right? So mm -hmm. zucchini counts. You can eat that okay. as part of that. But he does typically tell people to go all the way. And then start reintroducing. Yeah, I would do the honey like before workouts. You know, at least have some kind of. Carbs. That's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so I'm gonna do like a modified version of this. I think because I I don't I'm not I'm so not, I dude I don't it's, yeah my workouts. Are I flat, mean now here's dude. a deal like I always think about digestion like doesn't it make you constipated as hell or no, no I know not people at are all. saying it's that but weird that no it doesn't and and. and yeah, and I don't know. Like, I, I don't know if I totally subscribe to. I remember uh, what, what's the other Dr. Sean Baker yeah. is that his name. Yeah, so he was talking about it. Is you just absorb a lot more of the nutrients because it's more bioavailable. That was his argument for it. Well, no, it's true. It is true. You're so gonna lose you, bulk. You, you shit less. Like, yeah, that's like, true. You shit less and it's smaller like amounts. Yeah, yeah no, that's true because you get bulk from insoluble fiber, and mm -hmm. that's why if you take like psyllium husk, mm -hmm. you'll get these nice, <laughs> fully formed poops because it adds bulk uh, to your stool. Mm. Meat doesn't add much bulk. Yeah. So you're going to have smaller poops. I figure because this is not like... I little, mean, little tiny nuggets. <laughs> my psoriasis is not like a... It, it, I've been living with it for a long time. It's not that big of a deal to where I'm going to like... I need to mm -hmm. like eliminate everything. I'm like, uh, why don't I kind of move in that direction? You've also been uh, com uh, complaining a little <laughs> bit about inflammation. Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm wondering if that's connected. Yeah, I know. Because it's been strange. You've been saying how weird it, you're, you've been feeling inflamed. In certain yeah, ways. I say that, but then at the same time, too, I also openly admit that I'm not, like, dialed, right? Like, mm. that's actually the, some of the best I felt was when I was dieting for com competition because I was so... Of course. Yeah, I was so diligent about what I was consuming and so restrictive on, on so many foods that, you know, right now I'm kind of all over the place. Mm. My consist so I'm really looking to just build something consistent the idea is to do is to kind of tease out a lot of foods, uh, primarily with things that I might think would be healthy, like avocados and vegetables and nightshades mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, and then maybe stick to mostly meat, maybe one carb, like either rice or yams, and then like fruit. And then I, I'll, I'll stick to that. That will give me enough variety that I don't right. feel like I, and then I can slow. Just add like one item That's at right. a time. That's right. That. And then I'll, then I'll slowly start to add in a vegetable, like and then I'll just only eat asparagus, see if that does mm -hmm. anything. And then I'll only eat spinach, see if that does anything. Oh, interesting. So yeah. Let's I'll, see what happens. I know. You might just get shredded. Yeah. <laughs> well, oh, hopefully boy, that's yeah, that's, a, yeah, that's definitely going to happen. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the podcast. Sorry to interrupt you, but I have an important message for you. So check this out. I'm going to read this here. Hard, full, thick, tight biceps. Those are great, but what if the pump down below is less than amazing? That sucks. This episode is actually brought to you by our sponsor, Blue Chew. Did you know that erectile dysfunction is the most commonly reported sexual dysfunction? Some studies even suggest that erectile dysfunction rates are growing. Now, the good news is, Erectile dysfunction medications are extremely effective. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable form, so you can just chew on it, um, and at a fraction of the cost. Blue Chew's tablets combat all forms of ED and can help main men gain extra confidence for when it's time to perform. Your girls will love it. It's an online prescription service, right? So there's no visits to the doctor's office. No awkward conversations, no waiting in line at the pharmacy, and it ships right to your door in a discreet, a discreet package. So here's all you got to do. It's super simple. Sign up at bluechew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part, it's all done online. So if you want to benefit from extra confidence when it's time to perform, visit bluechew.com for details and important safety information. By the way, we have a special deal for you. You can actually try Blue Chew for free when you use the promo code 
mind pump at checkout. All you got to do is pay $5 shipping. So go to bluechew.com, use the code mind pump, get one month for free to try it out. All right. Enjoy the rest of the podcast. First question is from Forlavesi Claudio. When feeling tired, is it better to have a mediocre workout or rest and train the next day? Yeah, so this depends on on how tired you are and why you're tired. If mm. if you went It also depends I also think it depends on um how often this happens to you too. Of course. Cuz uh remember when we had a we had a good interview with um Dr. Andy Galpin. Mm. And we we talked about this a little bit. And he made a really good case for um, there's value in, you know, kind of forcing yourself through uh, a, a workout like this sometimes. Mm -hmm. Not all the time, not most of the time, sometimes. Yeah. So if you're somebody who like... Optimizing versus adapting. That's right. That's mm -hmm. Right? And so there, there, is, there is times where it's like, hey, you know, you being able, you want to be able to get up and do these things when you take it. If you always you know, go easy or fold when you're tired or fatigued all the time, then when you need to get at it, you're, gonna, you're not going to be able to perform. Yeah. Now, another thing to consider is that movement, so long as the intensity and volume is adjusted, is usually good for you. Almost, almost, not always, but almost no matter what. So if you feel sluggish or sore or tired, you probably don't want to go to the gym and beat yourself up. But what you might want to do is go to the gym and and do some full range of motion mm -hmm. movement yeah, at low a, intensity. Adjust your intensity, yeah. Yeah, some mobility stuff at low to moderate intensity, some stretching. And what you'll find is it actually helps rejuvenate the body. It actually helps increase improved circulation. So in, in those cases, sitting down and resting might be bad. Because here's another thing. These days, a lot of people feel sluggish and tired because they don't move. That's mm -hmm. right. Not mm -hmm. because they've been moving too much. I've seen this with my own kids, when, mm -hmm. especially when they're doing school from home. I'll take them outside and force them to work out or go on a walk. First 10 minutes, they're uh, complaining. After about 10 minutes, their energy starts to perk up, and they feel a lot better, even though they're complaining at the beginning and saying, I'm too tired to work out. Yeah, well, you know, your body responds to what you do the most, and, and that's what you're – you're literally teaching your body uh, what the priorities are every single day. And so to – to get up and to move at least, and, and like you said, like adjust your intensity and at least go through ranges of motion, I think is massively valuable because it just still sort of sends that signal that the body needs to move, it needs to function, it needs to express itself, uh, and that's a healthy practice to maintain. But you know, there are some days where you just had like uh, an incredibly intense workout, or you know, you're just bombarded with work, or you, you just haven't taken a day off at all. I think it's valuable too to just take it off. Yeah, totally. But you know, and there was that one study you brought up a couple episodes ago, Justin, where they showed that people working their grip mm, uh, yeah. improved their cognition. Just mm -hmm. that that flexing and, and squeezing of the hand got them to perform better with cognition. I noticed with the trigger sessions in Maps Anabolic, when I was testing the program out, I noticed throughout the day the trigger sessions were better than a cup of coffee. They energized me, mm -hmm. even if I went into them like, "Oh man, I'm so I don't really want to do this," and then I do it, and then I'd come out of it, and I'd feel invigorated. So movement is usually a good idea. You just have to modify the intensity and the volume. Next question is from FP Packer. What are the best at home stability exercises to increase the big three or five? I've got, I've got the first two right away. Um, I've for squatting and deadlifting. I love pistol squats and single leg deadlift, mm. uh, for bench. What would I do stability wise at home that I think would Im improve that? You, well, I'll, so I'll give you a couple that I noticed for me. You had a huge carryover for presses and squats. Um, two things: carries, overhead carries, really improve my mm -hmm. presses. Mm -hmm. Just that stability that's required to like hold that, that no, extended I, no, position. I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. The tight body, especially the overhead press. I couldn't, I couldn't believe how much stronger I was at the overhead press. Just from practicing heavy overhead dumbbell like that, like or that. kettlebell carries. Sled driving. Okay. So I have now incorporated sled drives regularly into my routine. Saturday mornings, that's my workout. As I'm driving the sled for five or six rounds, and I'm putting as much weight as I can stack on there. And what's happened as a result of that is my squat has gone through the roof. And I, it's 100% because of the drives. I'm squatting 
more, almost more weight, if not more weight than they've ever squatted before. And it's entirely yeah. because of the sled drives. And I know Joe DeFranco like mm-hmm. swears by them. Now, sled drive is oh, I love them. partial stability. Part of it is the driving of the legs. But the part that I really feel most solid when I squat now is my glutes, my upper back. And it, and it comes from holding the my arms at distance mm-hmm. and driving you know, 600 pounds across the pavement. It's really made a big difference. Yeah, and I would add one to like the overhead press, um, the bottoms-up kettlebell press. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, of course, this, this requires you to have a kettlebell at your house. But um, just that stability from... Uh, you know, you know, having like the different planes, so the frontal plane, so left to right stability, having sagittal plane, uh, front to back stability, having that rotational uh, component, like all those things you have to account for because the load itself is is teetering. So you don't know which side it's going based off of your weakness. It's gonna it's gonna lean towards your weakness, and you have to adjust. And so I think it's it's a it's a really valuable uh, exercise if you're gonna look at it as like reinforcing your shoulder joint and really addressing a lot of the stabilizing muscles that are behind it. Which yeah. is, is normally a limiting factor for most people increasing their bench. So that, right. that was really good. I don't know why I didn't think that right away, which also reminds me then of uh, the Z-Press. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. that's another great shoulder strength stability exercise that you can do and practice at home if you want to increase your bench. Especially that one because you kind of start down below on your oh, chest totally. and press and pull it through. It addresses your core and, and back, yeah. lower back stability like yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah totally. And then uh, here's some other ones you could do at home. You could do a full plank with your arms extended and really increase intensity mm-hmm. through your arms and shoulders. Or you could bring the push-up all the way down. If you tend to get stuck at the bottom of a bench press, you can go all the way down, hover above the floor, and hold that with good, tight intensity yeah. for time. So you basically do an isometric at the bottom portion of the Have a, you of seen Smitty's? It's, it's more advanced. I wouldn't like the, recommend the it to band? everybody, but yeah, on top of one of those what big, does he call bands. What does it There's a name uh, he calls uh, it. Like the earthquake? Uh, I think so. Earthquake push-up. Push-up or something? Or something? Yeah. But uh, I thought I've actually done those before, and I do find it very challenging in, you know, uh, that and the bamboo bar as well. So, like, uh, the bamboo bar has, like, a flex to it, so uh, and you hang weights uh, with, with rubber bands. So, basically, you know, they move, uh, and, and it's basically, like, the, the the weight and the load shifts a lot, and you have to account for that. So, there's some value to those. Well, well. maybe a, a regression to that, because that, that's a bit advanced, That I, but I like where you're going with that, is uh, suspension trainer. Oh yeah, suspension trainer pushups are are grossly underrated. Such a great. You're at, uh, I mean, that's a great point. Totally. It, it's yeah. and it's a really great exercise to kind of prime before you go into chest, like because especially if you've got good mobility and you can yes, go real deep. That's what, that's what I mean. Like you you work on the the depth of those and good shoulder stability like that because the arms are independent. Uh, I've had a lot of, like a lot of success with going over do two or three sets of suspension trainer push-ups. I pick an angle that's relatively easy as far as the push-up portion of it, but more the stability of the shoulder and range of motion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do that for two or three sets, then go over to bench. I feel really locked in and stable before I go in. So that's a good movement. Mm-hmm. Next question is from Ty Finnicum. What are your thoughts on calorie cycling? Can you switch between very low-calorie days and days at maintenance uh, be a, an effective strategy for fat loss. Uh, this is the best way to do it, in, yeah. in my opinion. And there's a couple reasons why. One is more important than the other. Let's start with the less important reason. I believe that doing this prevents the metabolic slowdown that comes from cutting your calories, uh, or at least it mitigates it, right? So when you cut your calories, no matter what, uh, your, resi- your your body's always trying to match your calorie intake, and it, it, it's going to try to slow down your metabolism. Now, resistance training can help offset this. Nonetheless, you do it long enough, you're still going to see a metabolic slowdown. I think injecting higher calorie days tells the body that it doesn't necessarily need to do this, and and it reduces that effect. And there's some studies support that support this. They show that people who do this tend to lose more fat and less muscle when they follow the strategy versus just going on a, on a total cut. Now, the more important reason for me is the psychological one. Yeah. This mimics real life more than eating the same calories all the time. So if you're following a macro, you know, if you're counting your macros or you're trying to eat a particular way, but you know eventually you're going to go off that and live a regular life, if you eat the same thing every single day, transitioning transitioning from there to real life, it's going to be much harder than if you got used to the ups and downs Mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, that's normally how you eat. Do you know how I piece this together? I actually did not know about the the science to support it first, but I started to do it for the psychological reasons first. I mean, and that's the most important. I remember with clients um, that, you know, back when we used to give meal plans, 
that that were very generic and the same thing basically and they were right around the same target was getting these complaints of like feeling oh i'm so tired of it Can mm-hmm. you do, and i have to rewrite another one rewrite another one one of the hacks that i found really quick was just giving these these drastic different targets mm-hmm. uh like you know hey today and i would tell them like you know, today we're focusing for the next two days low cal so i want you to stay at this calorie range here's your kind of food choices just don't go above that and then on Thursday, I'm going to let you go to, you know, 2,800 calories. So we're going to have a good feed day. And then you, these are your food choices and give them like options like that. Mm-hmm. Just giving clients this, this variety of goals almost daily like that broke up the monotony of doing the same thing all the time. Mm-hmm. And I had more success. This was before I found out later on that it was advantageous for them to do that ver- because of how it mimics real life and then what it does for the metabolism. Yeah. It's so funny because we always try to like create this uniformity and, and create these sort of standardized ways like well i'm so disciplined that i i'm so regimented i do this all the time but yeah it's totally like undulating and and, and ha- allowing flexibility and all that like it mimics just uh, what what you do in your life like already i think that it, 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 it's always a lot more successful implementing strategies like this even with training too next question is from chechi cr what do you think about earthing or grounding okay so i like it but not for the reasons that they say Okay, so the, the, the theory with earthing and grounding has something to do with the electrical charge. Not like what you brought up in the intro. Yeah. Where you're uh, digging holes. No, not yeah. okay. <laughs> that. That's not earthing? No. <laughs> okay. What are you doing over there? Yeah. I'm earthing the ground. <laughs> earthing it, dude. Yeah, all right, keep earthing. No, it's, um, so the theory is that you have these, these charged, you know, uh, the earth has a different electrical charge that you put your bare feet on and it balances out the electrical charge. It's good for your body. Something along those lines. I don't think that's why it's valuable. I think it's valuable because the bottom of your feet are full of nerve endings. 7,000. And and the brain is connected to all those nerve endings. And because you, your feet are constantly covered, and that, not just covered, but then you got rubber soles on top of them, that part of the brain that processes that atrophies and you lose connection to your feet and lose connection to those nerves and how they feel. So I think walking barefoot on grass and on the ground and on different things is good because it develops the muscles of the feet and it also develops the brain, the connection to those nerves. And I think that's why people see benefit. I don't think it has to do with the electrical charges of the human body. Electromagnetism. And the, yeah. No. Well, since I'm since I'm married to the woo woo girl, I'm not I'm not discounting the the what the so what this reminds me of, and I know you'll agree with this. It's very s- similar to like uh, the way like massage therapists have been communicating like the energy in your body, yeah. the way it moves, and stuff like, like meridians that. Meridians and all that. But you know, so I think the language around it, we're just not there yet. Exactly all the benefits. I could agree with that, and I agree. I one hundred the way what got me to get behind it was what you said, right? Because like you, I have that side of me that's like so anti woo woo. But if you show me some science to support, like, like, oh, that's very obvious to me. Nerve endings in the feet, mm-hmm. you're not connected to the ground. It's literally like, could you imagine working out in big old snow gloves all the time? Or just always having gloves. Yeah, on, right? exactly. Trying to write with a pencil, do you things. You would lose so much of your ability in the- in Yeah, your, you'd be your, terrible. Yes. You would be terrible the way you write. You'd Dude, be terrible. Mark Wahlberg's pulling it off. Okay, guys? <laughs> yes. yeah. Sorry. Full finger gloves. Throw that in there. What the hell, man? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you, so th- that part is very obvious to me, right? And, and, uh, and especially now that, um, I remember after I met with Dr. Brink and, you know, really started to break down my own feet and realize how many problems that people have mm-hmm. that are stemming from the feet and the, that that starts with being connected and grounded and being able to actually grip the the, the floor and if you'd always yeah. have gloves on or shoes and socks on you don't ever train those muscles right yeah i like it just for being conscious of like being able to articulate your toes individually and being able to feel uh you know a little bit of a slight roll like in your ankle and being able to adjust based off of the surface and uh there's just so much value to that like you could think of it as like you're just atrophying your your muscles and your whole uh you know support system there in your feet by always like casting them in these shoes so these these are the the physiological things Things that we know are backed by science that mm-hmm. we can all get behind. I still think there's something else there too. There's something about when you take your shoes off and you just walk through some grass or dirt or the sand on the beach and stuff like mm-hmm. that. It's just, it's an uplifting feeling connected to the earth. It, it connected and, to nature. And, I what I, a big piece. and I feel like that's the woo-woo part 
that they, that they try to explain that they try and explain. I, I I can I can get behind that because I mean we evolve that way. Let's be honest. Uh, mm-hmm. We could create. Let me let me give you a different way, uh, a different example. We could create a fake sun, right? We could create a lamp that produces all the same UV rays on us, but it would still probably feel different than being out in the sun because we evolved for millions of years touching the earth with our skin mm-hmm. so i could i could get behind that there's probably more to it i you know uh, the part that i explain is the part that i know for sure right yeah. that i can explain yeah, yeah. i think it's it, somewhat of like we're adapting with our environment instead of like trying to create your own environment uh you know to navigate your way through instead you're working with the different you know terrain of the environment yeah, yeah. you know it's funny when you with these people who you know especially modern hunter gatherers that are still barefoot we think, oh, their feet must be so thick with calluses and numb, like shoes. And that's not true. They do have calluses, but their feet are far more sensitive than ours. And I don't mean sensitive like they're, they're ticklish or whatever. That's not sensitive. That means we can't process the sensations. That's why we can't handle certain things on our feet. Their feet are much more functional, and they can feel things underneath, adjust their weight, adjust their toes, climb things, things that we would have difficulty doing even with shoes on. So, and, and here's a deal at some, you know, now as adults, I'm sure there's a part of our brain that now is permanently never going to be like it could have been had we always done this. As oh, children. it's definitely, I mean, I've put a lot of work in trying to work on my, and I've, I've come a long way, but I'm still unbelievably disconnected. You're, you're, look, it's like learning a language when you're older. You're always going to have an accent, right? So I bet your son though, you can see the difference in your son. Well, and that's uh, what mm-hmm. I'm excited, right? I'm yeah. excited that I, uh, you know, I have this boy that I could have, I didn't have the knowledge as a young boy to do this and I'm watching him and I'll tell you something right now, like that, that was obviously there was contention in the family about me pushing that so much, but my son skipped that wobbly fall and hit your head face. Like he literally did that. He felt he feels the floor. He had it for like maybe a week, dude. Like a week of when he went from not being able to walk to walking. There was that small transition. He is so unbelievably stable all the time. Like he does. I've never. We haven't had. You know the one time. Do you remember me told the yeah, story? Yeah, she put shoes on. She put the one time Max has fallen over and yeah. bumped his head and hurt himself was the first time that she put shoes on him outside. Dude, I was watching old mm-hmm. home videos uh, when I was a kid, and back in those days, doctors actually used to tell moms, when your baby starts to walk, put very strong supportive shoes on them yeah. to help them walk. And baby shoes, they used to make them. They'd have like stiff soles. Wood. They'd have those wood. They were like- Yes. A, yeah, I With remember. a heel on it, and it was like, and they would, you would feel, it would be like, like little casts. Yeah. And they said it was to help your baby walk. Well, anyway, I'm watching these old home videos, and there I am as a baby, and I see myself trying to walk in these damn shoes, and I'm like- Really trying hard not to like get mad that's at my mom. That's where your athletics went. Yeah, that's what happened right yeah. there. You know what's cool too? <laughs> this is why. This is why is, I'm not good we at figured it out. You know what I love about it too is that it's. I mean, he's what is he now? A year, a little over a year and a half, and I trained him so well now that like I don't feel like I'm ever going to have to even have the discussion because he hates socks and shoes on. Mm-hmm. Like he don't even want them. Have a Ben Greenfield, bro. He don't even want it. <laughs> totally. He don't even want them on his feet because you, you could tell he wants to be. And I, I love it. You can see his feet working all the time when he's sitting down in a squat and stuff like that. I can see his toes all moving around. I'm like, oh my God, dude. Like I feel like that's going to make such a difference in him later on in life just with movement in general because he is so grounded and connected. That's awesome. Look, if you like our content, you love mindpumpfree.com. Go head over there. Check out all of our free content. We have free guides that can help you burn body fat, help you with your diet, uh, train your body, different body parts. Again, it's mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on social media. You can find us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. The opposite tends to be the rule. The people that need to get strength training, exercise more in their life are the ones most likely to gravitate to not exercising at all, not training, and getting them involved in in moving and exercise is going to do tremendous things for their libido. The people that love to exercise and train hard and push themselves. 